Joining me now for more on this independent political analyst, Aidan Smith. Aidan, interested in what you think the, the real mm. reason is for dropping out. Uh, I don't think mm. anyone thought Ron DeSantis was going to win, but did he think as well he was going to be clearly relegated to third spot, so he's getting ahead of that scenario? You know, it's really interesting because obviously DeSantis's campaign has seen... Um, let's just say the opposite of momentum in the past six to eight months. And obviously the Iowa caucus disappointment after a lot of his supporters really wanted him to pull out an upset there. Obviously that precluded the possibility of him winning the nomination or even being competitive. But it is interesting because there were reports as recently as I want to say yesterday that DeSantis was expected to at least stay until South Carolina. Uh, I think a lot of people do have whiplash at the fact that Mr. DeSantis endorsed Trump um, immediately as in, you know, in his announcement speech that he was suspending his campaign, it was kind of inevitable in my view that he would have endorsed Trump. Uh, but I do think that, yeah, I think mm. that instead of being relegated to third place against Trump and Haley, he just chose to go out on his own path. And I think it's clear that today, without question, Trump clinched the nomination of the GOP. Yeah, I think we're all seeing that as inevitable. How does the rest of it play out? So Nikki Haley will obviously try her luck at New Hampshire and maybe if it's a close result, we talk about it for a bit longer, but can she also become effectively the, the backup candidate? How do the mechanics of that actually work? Is there anything official? You know, you're in second spot because you never know what happens to first spot. And that's obviously relevant to Donald Trump and his legal matters, but there's always a chance something happens. How are the mechanics of second spot, if you like? For sure. So the, you know, both of the primary systems for both of the Democratic and Republican primaries, they've evolved really steadily over time. You know, 60, 70 years ago, the delegates would be chosen. They'd have a handful of primaries throughout the country. But for the most part, it was the joke about the uh, smoke filled room delegates would choose the nominee. In the modern, you know, mass media era where the primaries themselves are spectacles, people our, elect our presidential elections are basically two-year periods where people get acquainted with the candidates. Um, it's a really different in the sense that, yeah, if uh, Mr. Trump did bow out and there was a, someone who is clearly in a close second behind him in a really contested primary, you know, thinking in terms of like the 2020 Democratic primary between Biden and Sanders, which looked really close at one point, there probably would be pressure for someone mm. like Haley to be anointed. Uh, but given that it would be such an unusual circumstance in the modern era, I want to think that in this event, probably Republican delegates would try to coalesce around someone more allied with Trump's wing of the party. Uh, who that would be, I'm not entirely sure. But I do think that is an interesting mm. hypothetical going forward.